Mikey. Yes. Welcome. And welcome all of you to our AEW Dynamite Review. This is Just Three Gents with JVL, Mikey, and you. Because we, while being biconic, are also timeless of all times. Oh, this was this was a good one, Mikey. I enjoyed myself watching this show. <laughs> this was a, a, a ways back up the ladder, too. This is fun. And I'm glad we can have fun, especially on the fourth anniversary of Dynamite. Welcome to our review of it. And Mikey, how are you feeling this evening? Did you enjoy Dynamite last night? You know, um, I don't I know. Actually, Please t- I'm asking. Please tell me. <laughs> I, 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 overall, I liked this episode of Dynamite. I thought this was a lot of fun to watch. There was a lot of fun moments. For me personally, I got to see some of my favorites. You know, yeah. um. And, you know, with the Fressel Dream in the rear view mirror, now we're building towards full gear because uh, we got our first official match for our full gear tonight. We got a lot of things uh, brought up uh, tonight that are going to be affecting future plans overall and some things that are still spinning their wheels in odd ways. So uh, it's going to be a fun one, folks. And we start off with a promo, which is odd for AEW to start with a promo. But you have two men who ostensibly do not like each other in the ring have not for years have been rivals talking about how great it is at four years of dynamite where things have gone how they're together chris jericho kenny omega talking to renee paquette this is you know this is peak aew you think aew it's these three together a lot of the time i don't know mikey no maybe not maybe not this was okay (laughs) (laughs) like again it served its purpose because it brings it brought in Mr. Adam Copeland to this whole mess. Um, fine. <laughs> New era. I was fu- I was happy to see Edge or sorry Adam Copeland interact with Renee as well. So it was fun to start off that way. But then we move swiftly on. That was just announcing what the night was about. It's a new era, four years, all that good stuff. And we go to our first match for the international title: Ray Phoenix versus Nick Jackson. Hooray. Um, this this was a ma- this was the match where we just basically showed how banged up these guys are and why they both probably shouldn't be wrestling that much if this is real injury, because the two of them destroyed each other more than they already had been. I don't know how each, either of them has a spine at this point. I really don't either. And towards the end of this. I worry for. Ray so much because two weeks ago with that nasty looking leg and then what happened at Wrestle Dream too like he just collapsed and then he was gone from that fatal four way tag team number yeah. one contendership match and Penta literally does what Penta does and he had to fight as one person but he had to have the fight for two since he was by himself I was like <sighs> <sighs> I know and, and and the selling of this match as well, you could tell there were certain one, certain bumps that Ray took that were actually very real to the point of probably did more damage than they were worth. Uh, we end up getting a quick back and forth, a Canadian Destroyer, Phoenix kicks out of that, uh, and then uh, BTE Trigger, he kicks out again. It, it basically takes a frog splash and then a well-timed you know, roll-up pin to win, basically. It was roll-up to roll-up, and that's Phoenix defending the title. We also get set up that he will be taking on John Moxley next week uh, for the titles of round two. I don't know about you, Mikey. I'm hoping they put it back on Mox because Fenix needs some time. That was my question that I was going to ask you because I was like, I feel like they're. And this is nothing against the Ray because I know what happened at Grand Slam was not his fault. It was neither of their fault. It It was was nobody's fault. That was a cursed venue like at that. Gosh. That, yeah, Dynamite Grand Slam was the thing. Um, I hope it goes back on box, and and that's nothing to take away from Ray, but if this means that they take it off him so he can go heal and do whatever he needs to because he's been wrestling injured the last three weeks, he's been wrestling or at least something. Last injury. I mean, like, he he always gets injured. He's usually working hurt. Right. I I don't know. there was a slight worry that I, for some odd reason, because I've been conditioned for some shenanigans and tomfoolery. I don't know why I was talking about that all. I thought 
for, I don't know why, and I shouldn't have really been worried about it, but there was a small part of me. I was like, oh my God, what did they actually give it to Nick? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting. That'd be very interesting to have him wrestle and by himself and show off. I mean, he's done a little bit as a singles wrestler. And does that breed, you know, dissension in the young bucks then because someone is still a title holder and stuff like that. I don't know. It could have been interesting, but I don't think it was needed. It didn't make sense for the for the lineage of the title and how it would, how it would work. Right. And again, I shouldn't really have worried too much about it. But again, I've been conditioned for people like co- wrestling companies pulling swerves out of nowhere. I'm like, don't do this. <laughs> well, there is one swerve we want them to pull out of somewhere, which is later on. They talk about who's going to be at Wrestle Dream, i.e. swerve. So that was a good swerve. Um, but uh, we, 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 we get from there. We have our match opening up and against the international title. Happy to see it there to uh, AEW doing what AEW does best video packages or live promos with audio issues where you cannot understand a word that's being said. If you are at least on the American broadcast. I thought there was something wrong with my sound bar when I was watching this and I was about to, I was freaking out. I'm like, oh, gosh, it's messing with my television. Exactly. And then I had to, upon the second watch, I'm like, nope, absolutely not. It wasn't my sound bar, so I almost destroyed it for nothing. <laughs> exactly. And I wish I had had the Fight TV feed because apparently it was fine there everywhere else except for TBS. This is basically saying stop watching AEW on TBS, watch it on the British feed later. It seems to be better. So if I can find a way to do that, Mikey, we're going to have to get like Fight TV and a, and a VPN. If a VPN wants to sponsor the podcast so we can watch... AW Dynamite in the best way possible. Please let us know. We're open to all VPNs. Uh, uh, NordVPN. <laughs> I'm a Nord customer at this point, but I'm happy to switch. Uh, but we did. So this was a video package that was supposedly of Adam Cole and uh, Roderick Strong in his house. We'll talk about it later when it actually uh, goes on. But when we actually was, hear what happened and when it exactly. didn't sound like we were underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Three robots in a can. Um, it was very strange to watch that come through, but they cut back from it early and you saw Griff Garrison in the ring who had gotten his entrance, but you see now how a jobber entrance works, which they actually do get usually a theme song if they're a known quantity. But then usually when they come back from TV, they're there staring in the ring. They had to cut back early. You heard Griff Garrison's theme song. So I'm like, oh, Griff's out here. This is going to be great. What's going to happen? I mean, you know, he may, obviously he's probably not winning tonight, but that'd be fun to see what he's going to do. Is it going to tie into ROH? And Justin Roberts gets up and says, and his opponent, like it's a championship match, doesn't ma- mention who it is. And we have a re-debut of Wardlow out of nowhere. This was a wet fart. I'm sorry. Oh, it was. Uh, I'm pretty sure Griff had a couple of those in the five power bombs he took. This was a a. This is beyond a squash match. Wardlow came out and just dis- just destroyed Griff Garrison, decimated him on the ring. Five power bombs. Doesn't win by pinball. Win by knockout. <laughs> and is told to leave. Doesn't acknowledge the crowd. Doesn't acknowledge anybody else. Just comes out to do the job and leave. And you know what? I'm here for this Wardlow, which doesn't care about the fans because he was in a weird place before he left where he was trying to be a baby face and it didn't work. Make him a killing machine. Let's do it. Orange Cassidy thumbs up. <laughs> this I, one? Mm, I, mm. What? What? what mm. I mean, I'm here for this Wardlow. I just didn't care for how we brought him back into the fold after it was confirmed that he's been sitting on the sideline for months because they haven't had anything to do for him or they didn't have anything for him. I'm like, how the mm, sure, fine. Well, think about it. I mean, the amount of they haven't had stuff for powerhouse Hobbs or Miro either, and he's in that mold. How how would you have something for any one of your giant powerhouse guys when you haven't been booked that way? Everyone you're booking has leapfrogged him and then gotten hurt. Really, the reason they're using him is that Adam Cole's out. You've got, you know, uh, a bunch of other people injured or like, you know, or going to be out for a little while. You've got to bring somebody off your back bench to be in there. And he has a proven track record, but he's not going to do anything. Like, where, where do you put him? Do you put him against Luchasaurus and, and Christian Cage with the TBS title? Do you put him against, you know, the international title scene? Which, no, and you don't want him holding that. Where do you put him? Because he's not at the main event level yet, other than MJF's there. So you can finish a story with that. But I don't think that's what they're going for. I don't know. I mean, that's fair. I I personally hated the way that he came back, but at least he's back because I have Miss Wardlow, so we'll see what happens next. We will. And then we get the human embodiment of the brown note, Don Callis, along with Konosuke uh, Takeshita in backstage with Renee, talking about how the fact that 
Sammy Guevara is the next big thing in this company, but he's injured because the quack doctors say he is, so he can't compete tonight with with Konosuke. So we've got to get him a tag team partner. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm tr- think when the when they said that I was like replaying the Wrestle Dream match in my head. I was like, I don't remember Sammy like getting a legit hurt. Oh, you don't. Aren't, Do no, you never- remember the botched cutter where the, he was basically on roller skates the rest of the match? Oh, wait. Yeah, never mind. Listen, it was a blur. Okay. <laughs> For him, too, apparently. Yeah, he definitely had a head injury on a couple of those things. He was not himself after he missed that cutter. And then, and- of course, we find out who they get later because guess what? Mr. Mark Davis himself is out with a broken wrist, which was unfortunate. So but it let's make Kyle Fletcher a single star again. I'm like, damn it, Kyle Fletcher. They're pulling a Dante Martin with him at this point where they want him to work with people like that. And you know what? It it got him on TV. It used a person that you wanted to have there. You have the backing of uh, Will Ospreay. So now the result of the match later gets to breed dissension in that. You know, it's not a bad, mad move. And it showcases that they trust him enough to be part of a storyline. So I'm I'm here for Kyle Fletcher uh, having to basically clean up Sammy Guevara's mess. I hope Sammy gets well soon and maybe learns from this not to do that cutter or anything else anymore, like save some stuff. He won't. No, this is won't. the same dude that took the Cody cutter off of the top of that ladder when they had that ladder match. So, Mikey, we're flying through the show because this is kind of how it was. It was like bang, bang, like coming through really fast. Things were just kind of back to back. There wasn't a lot other than that kind of weird technical issue. I checked out on this match. I, this had no stakes for me. I was I didn't see the point of this match. This was the acclaimed versus the Butcher of the Blade and Kip Sabian for the trios championship. Tell me, did, did you have a different point of view about watching this? Not really. Um, I don't know if we watched the same thing because on my notes I had, they replayed Adam Cole in the kingdom. For me. They had done. Do, they did do that beforehand, but it, it was listed later on. I'm going through my notes as well. Like I was I think I just like I thought I was I thought I was going crazy. I was like, wait, did I write in the wrong place? No, you had it there. I was skipping over it to get to this because I just want to say this was boring. So let's get back to the thing that was actually good beforehand. That's fair. Um. Still love the acclaim. Still love Billy Gunn. Oh, yeah. Um, don't, don't know what we're doing with the trios division, but that's just me. This it's the same Max, match every week. Max Caster had a better rap here than he did at the Wrestle Dream Zero Hour. Definitely did. I love the fact that Butcher is kind of <laughs> Butcher and Blade were trying not to break character with this, which was funny to watch. They caught Blade corpsing, which was hysterical. They caught him right before they had to cut away. Also, uh, justice for Kip Sabian. What are we doing with him? I love Kip. And Penelope. He's so talented. Like both, of both of them. Where is Penelope Ford? Tony Khan, what is happening? Where? <laughs> also, I, I, I'm not against if they want to put Kip like as a commentator too, or even like a host of something or backstage once in a while. Like he and Renee kills it at the all in pre-show, like as like the correspondence. Exactly. Especially when they didn't have everybody else around because of the contract signing. It was great to have the two of them on, on thing. Like get him back there with our, you know, RJ City and stuff like that. Like, have him do whatever he wants. Also, because it's the bike, it can't be an episode of the Biconic reviews without, you know, listen, I'm not going to complain if you put Kip Sabian back on, on my television screen every single week because that man, Benelli, before you're a very lucky woman. You are mm. very lucky. Mm hmm. But we'll move back from the match that was kind of standard and didn't really need to be there. Like I didn't further anything, didn't do anything to the replay of this video that we saw beforehand where Adam Cole is visiting Roderick Strong before his, before Adam gets to surgery to make sure Roddy's okay because Roddy said he had an emergency. So what happens? And it's growing on me. I'm sad it's growing on me, but him yelling Adam, even Adam when Adam's right there, is now funny. It's like it's gone to that point where it's funny finally, and it's going to come back around to where it's not. And like I know that, but having Roderick Strong in a wheelchair that says Hot Rod on the back and, and interacting with him in this way with the kingdom just standing around was, it was actually quite funny to me. I enjoyed this. This was so fucking stupid, but I loved it. <laughs> just, again, the giraffe, just like Matt Taven, just petting the giraffe during this montage. And then <laughs> Mike Bennett Rock. is in the glasses, just staring into space. Like, yep. Yeah. Basically like, for those that didn't see it, uh, uh, Roddy brings Adam into his home, shows him that he got him a present, a scooter that he can be on for his knee. They race around the house and the, the, uh, kingdom are looking a little bit upset. And then Adam asks him, to, oh no, Roddy asks him to feng shui his home. And 
Adam rightly asked why the kingdom can't do it. They're, they're right there. Well, I don't trust them with design. You know design. And so Adam is then montage of him lifting heavy things, moving like basically re-hurting himself in different ways. And it was just too funny. And the kingdom, they're like petting the giraffe the evil way they can. This was so stupid, but it was it was great. And it's and I agree with you. This is growing on me like a rash, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But it did also set up something at the end that played into something later in the evening, which is why they had to get this right. So you could hear that last bit that, like, as Adam's about to go out, Roddy calls him back in again. He's got more to do. So Adam is not available. The bro chachos are in trouble right now, but we'll talk. We'll talk. Again, we'll get to that part because I was just like, I love that they acknowledge what happened between MJF and who came in during the scene. But yeah. also, I was just like, this was a weird direction, but sure, okay. Well, um, yeah, no, I, I kind of would enjoy that a little bit. It'd be kind of fun. And have <laughs> even better, have Max hold their titles with them, just like add more titles. He's literally like being dumped on all these team titles. He's not really ready to be a team player, and he's got all these team titles on him. <laughs> so silly and so dumb but uh speaking of silly dumb and teams though we then get the bullet club gold minus jay white coming out to address all the stuff going on with uh, adam cole and with all with mjf and and what's been going on there we have them this is what i've got here what did you have next well i i mean i guess we can throw this in when we get to the women's match but after so it go in my notes goes the replay of adam cole in the kingdom then the, the trios championship match. Then I have Tony Storm's interview with RJ City. That's right. I forgot about that. That was there. I thought that was later on, and it was and closer to the match. Like it led into it. No, you're right. It was right after this. Before we had both ends of this crazy relationship back to back, because you had Juice Robinson and the other thing too. That's hysterical. Yeah, because okay, so and you know I'm trying to be a good co-host because I'm not I'm not taking lead. So I was just like I don't you know. Mm, Wait, I'm exhausted. I'm doing my best here. <laughs> okay, so I'll help you keep on track because okay. yeah, so next is this uh, segment with RJ City. So we get the next portion of Portrait of a Star. It's the final um, one, right? It's the final bit there where she it's finally the final one because we, at the end of this, we got that timeless Tony Storm premieres tonight and Tony addresses the WWE situation where she basically calls out it's like, no, everybody's a FOMO Huskas themselves. It's like slap on a backwards hat and get pied in the face and call it a day. I'm like, damn, she went there. <laughs> Every one of my friends has turned around. I've seen them dry up like husks. Be that. I love the affectation. I love that her accent fits into it. I love where she's going with it and that she's like simplified it down to really this kind of distilled insanity. But Tony Storm, not... were you a theater kid? That's what I <laughs> She at least had to have been or something. Right. Like she's also channeling the energy of her partner at the same time, like going to that really, really far place and it's working for her. And I, I'm, I, I need to see more of this character. It, it makes me want to really like see how far down the depths this can go. Now I'm not saying I want to see like vignettes of her filming old movies. I don't think she needs that. I think she just needs to be having this breakdown, whatever this is and following the crazy, but this was perfect. And RJ said he sold it. He, he couldn't look her in the eye. He wasn't allowed to look at her. So he's looking off camera and getting the crap basically almost beat out of it. It was so good. And then, you know, he says, but uh, you're not old. You're, you're timeless. And then that's, I was like, yep. I was like, Oh, mm. I was like, this is again, Tony storm. I don't know where you went to find this gimmick, but I love it. <laughs> I yes. do. Yes, a hundred, a thousand times yes. So we'll get into Bullet Club Gold next, but quickly, we're basically told Swerve versus Danielson will fight next week, even though it's for a number one contendership for the TNT Championship. That's Swerve right. Versus, yeah, I was just like, that was the only downside. I was like, mm. but I'm like, but Swerve versus Danielson, I'm like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Now I get why Danielson wants to go for the TBS Championship. He's trying to like not put himself in the main event. TNT. Things and TNT star TNT. Actually, TNT. I wouldn't mind Danielson and Chris Statlander fighting. That'd be kind of epic. I'd be a little bit no, but uh, or even going... swerving Statlander would be great too. Oh God! Oh uh, my there gosh! Are major major intergender matches that could happen. That'd be amazing. Hell, but yes, the TNT title is the secondary title, even though it's really not. It's like the tertiary title because the secondary title is the international title at this point. 
Uh, but having them go for that, it's because it's mostly I'm pretty sure because Danielson is like, I don't want to be in the main event picture. I want to be just doing something else. What worries me with it is that that thing is so fixedly in Christian Cage's hand. And after what happened tonight, I don't think they're taking it off of him anytime soon to Mm-mm. do the, like, the dream matches. So why would you have two of your biggest stars who are trying to get up the card? One who's a little uh, trying to climb the card, the other who's literally trying to br- uh, bring people up, go for a number one contendership for a title that neither of them are going to get. It doesn't really make sense. No. Now we get to Bullet Club Gold. This was a long ass segment. <laughs> this was extremely long, but it, it, this is what AEW does. Is there's usually like a good double triple promo now, which like happens like four different ways. But we had the Gun Club and uh, Juice Robinson come down and basically uh, go full toxic masculinity on Max Friedman and get him to come out here. Which I, I was a little upset at, like uh, Juice going that far. Like it didn't, it didn't feel truthful to me as as like the professor and i usually say like find the truth in it this was like oh i have this is the way it's supposed to this is a stereotypical thing i've got to say to get him out here be toxic that's something i'm like juice you don't need to be toxic you're insane you can say whatever the hell you want listen here you honeycomb monster i was just like just be the chaotic serial mascot that we know and love you for so please also by the way can we acknowledge the fact that both him and his partner tony storm like are both going fucking crazy. And for some reason, I feel like Juice Robinson's version of crazy is more tamed and sane than Tony yes. Storm's. Because and I'm kind of here for it. <laughs> it's more scattershot. It's scarier with Tony because Tony is focused. It's a focused crazy going one direction. And you're like, oh, God, like scattershot crazy. You can dodge because you never it'll go everywhere and you can kind of get like dissipated. I'm with you on that one. It's just, it's insane. Also. Uh, Beautiful couple. They they are amazing human beings outside of the ring too. Just FYI. they really are. I love them both. It's so good. But they call out MJF, who makes his appearance, comes on out, and we have our promo battle against both there, including a bunch of stuff about uh you know ass boys and a, what was it the um something taint I forget what they called it, what he called him. Uh, I was talent. just like uh, talent. Uh, I was just like sure, and you know we took. I say we, but I'm like. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis touched on this during the Wrestle Dream review. I was just like, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, again, I under MJF is so over with the crowd. He knows how to work the crowd, which I'm not going to knock him for. And maybe I'm asking too much as a wrestling fan. I want a little more depth than outside of like. And I get why MJF says the things he does, because it appeals to like it's very. I mean this in respect, but it's very base, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah, it, it is cheap. Heat, it cheap pops. Lot Listen, cheap pops. I work with middle schoolers and I feel that my middle school students come up with better comebacks than what MJF says all the time. But, you know, he appeals to the masses. And so I get that. I just want a little more depth with Max here. And honestly, I was just like, OK, Max, I've heard you say some form of iteration of this to the Bullet Club. And for me personally, it got a little bit better after the ambush from Jay White, because then when Jay yeah. gets on the mic, I was like, thank you, Jay. This is this is we're slowly getting the Jay I like <laughs> and being true to that character, too, which is mm-hmm. very yes. So MJF basically says Jay White, he didn't he knows he didn't t- attack Jay White, but he'll take on the three of them in a street fight right now, which is like, oh, God, come on, really? Gets in the ring, they scatter and Jay White attacks him. Take, they take him out. They get the belt and Jay White challenges him. To an AEW title match. Yep. And we have and that full gear. That is our first full or second full gear match right there. I think it's the first one. Yeah, this oh, is the, the first. The, the, this this is the first official night. one. Yeah. I mean, good on them. We have like six weeks and seven, six to seven weeks until full gear, which I'm like, this is. But we have our main event. Yep. And selfishly, I'm excited because I will be live on location for full gear. The uh, group chat was live and, and amazing as Mikey uh, basically just said, I can't believe I'm going to be there for this. So I we want a full report uh, live t- uh, tweeting what's going on or li- at least live uh, messaging us uh, photos, videos, all those things of that and Tony Storm. It's all we we'll really need. It'll be fun. I swear if Tony Storm is not there, I will write it. I'm not going to lie. Give me my time with Tony Storm. Can she make it in the one women's match on the card? Uh ugh. So, yes, he gets attacked. We get the match set up. Jay White is really coming back into his own. He's finally allowed to be Jay White. 
We're very happy to see it back here. And this is going to be a hell of a match. I think uh, we also will figure out who this group is that attacked him. It may cost Jay White the title at that point. It'll be very interesting to see. Do you think I it's still think devil? it's I still think it's the Fa- uh, Faxion and Grenobles, but that's just me. Could be. I- I'm with you on this one. I think that that seems like the, the best uh, version of this. However, we move on from there to my favorite promo of the night. I don't know how you feel about this. Cassidy and Hook talking oh about having chips. <laughs> just like listen, I didn't yeah. know I wanted a depressed orange Cassidy. <laughs> no one knew it, and it's still he's amazing. a sad orange. And he's bringing up the whole fact that he should be facing Phoenix right now because he's injured, and like you know, Moxie shouldn't get an automatic rematch. It should be him, and but in the best way ever. And Hook's like, yeah, you're right. And they just start eating chips, and they offer it to Renee, and she just no. Renee will not take your basic Lay's chips. I I love I want more of these. Like this this is turning into what the early MJF. Oh, I love that I'm saying early MJF Adam Cole. Like if that wasn't a couple months ago, but this is seriously this is blossoming in the same way, and I'm really enjoying it. Oh man. I so please bring back <laughs> Danhausen and put this in a trios that I never knew I wanted. That would be the best thing ever. Danhausen's already cursing people. It's it'd be perfect. Although who needs the cursing at this point? Everyone's getting injured. Uh, Danhausen should come back and own that and be like, I was doing this to folks. I was doing this to bring everyone back. <laughs> so according to my notes, we move on from the Hook Danhausen promo to Kyle Fletcher and Konosuke Takeshita versus Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. We're on the same page. <laughs> okay, good. We're back on there. Uh, I wasn't a fan of this. Okay, me all. too. I was scared to say it, but I was like, I was kind of like, this was my least favorite match of the night. <laughs> I was just like, and it shouldn't have been because on paper, I mean, listen, it's no secret that I don't think highly of Jericho in this phase of his career. I don't hate the man, but I was just like, we don't need you to be, be kept being put in these spots where yeah. some other people can. Kenny is not so as egregious for me because, you know, it's Kenny. Well, he's, not. he's 10 years younger. Uh. <laughs> That's also very true. On paper, this should have been great because minus my feelings for Jericho, you had Kenny, Takeshita, and, you know, Kyle as a single star. I mean, I love him with Mark Davis for Aussie Open, but Kyle has proven he's a great single star, too. Well, he also offsets Takeshita really well in that set. They, they worked really well as a team, which was fun to it see. It was awesome. And that's on paper. And then this match happened. I was like, I feel like there's a piece missing here. It wasn't Ibushi. inherently horrible. It should have but- been Bushi and not Jericho. That's honestly, I would have rather had that because it would listen. It would mess with Kenny more, especially what happened after Mash. And well, no, can we get to before that? Yeah, Kenny won. Like that like, bothered what? me about like, why did Kenny get a pin on anybody? He should not be winning. He should be continuously losing, and everyone around him is either leaving him or not there while he's losing. He that this just halted momentum and killed Kyle Fletcher at the same time for no good reason. Why are we killing Kyle Fletcher? Like Tony Khan, you already buried Ozzy open when you stripped them of the ring of honor tag team championships. And then poor Kyle Fletcher getting pinned by Kenny Omega. And also in a weird way, I feel like this kind of negates Chris Jericho losing for the team it at does. wrestle dream. Oh, it does. I was like, huh? I'm like, listen, I'm all for equity and equality and balancing the scales, but this was a scale that did not need to be balanced. I'm like, Chris, Jericho should have lost and then they should have lost again. Overall, then, it was uh-huh. it was overbooked, not well taken care of, and it was the wrong way to get heat uh, because after the match, you then had a complete and utter beatdown of Omega with Jericho not basically selling on the outside, including what I am really upset that they did um, and they should know better, even with a gimmick chair and all these things, you know, coming to the chair shot that Omega took to the head. Uh, was, you know, and yes, Don Callis, you tell, you can tell, pulled that really, really far. And that was a gimmick chair to dent, but we don't need unprotected headshots anymore. You don't need it. Even Taz this, talking about it. This, uh, this irrationally made me pissed off. I was just like, what are we doing? Like, what is happening? I was like, Kenny ha- was out for the longest time because of all these multiple injuries. What yeah. is, I'm like, no, this was. To me, this was on the same level of Tony Khan allowing Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara to continue their match when, you know, Matt Hardy concussed himself. 
live yeah. on the pay per view. I was like, oh, yeah. and they still, and he still let them keep going. No, absolutely Mox not. Finishing the match concussed. I mean, exactly. Seriously, this, this Listen, is a track record here, Tony. We need to mm-mm, see. Mm-mm. I want these wrestlers to have longevity. We can't listen. WCW was great for its time, but we do not need to be having repeats of all that because if we look at all the guys from WCW, most of them are either dead or there's or, all yeah. most of mostly all of them is just gone. Which is going to be a Darby Allen when he's you know in his forties. But uh, this was this was bad. So basically, what ended up happening? They were beating up uh, Omega and Jericho, and a wild powerhouse Hobbs appears now. Pull me back here. I love that. I love that bringing him in, and he's the powerhouse they need to build be, uh, beat up people. But Takesh is supposed to be their their heavy. And on top of that, if you wanted powerhouse Hobbs here, why use him for a beatdown when you could put him in the match and wreck the two of them? The logic doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. And I slightly disagree with you. Oh, go please. <laughs> um. I fucking hate that Hobbs is in this position. Yeah. Because this has been his whole story this whole entire year and pretty much all of last year. It's just like he's been put in factions for no fucking reason. He was, you know, he's here right now with the Don Callis family. And then or he was is, with- like, or is he? Because, yeah, his hand was raised. And I think that but they don't they haven't said anything yet. No, but I bet you next week they're going to solidify it and then it's going to make me more irrationally mad. Before this, he was part timing with QTV, which it needs that QTV needs to go. I'm just I'd say it all the time on Rampage. That's just me. But well, like Powerhouse Hobbs, for the most part, has always been. It's the same story, like kind of like Sammy. Powerhouse Hobbs has been thrown in faction after faction after faction. And when he was finally a singles star with the TNT championship run that lasted not even that long. Right. They didn't even book him right then. The only match he's had, the only little bit there he's had has been Miro for the last little bit there. And that actually worked. But then they tried to continue, even though he lost, they tried to continue the feud. It's like, no, he lost pretty clean. Like you need to move on to something else. And I don't know whether it's because he's not great on the mic or anything else. This also seems to me like Don Callis is trying to be Paul Heyman, like set up that same kind of thing of like, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. I'm a Don Callis family member. That's why I'm successful. And it's not working. I don't know, man. I don't know. We go from I that, though. I hate, we, I, 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 I hate it here. Some, I really like I'm not liking this bit there. And this is the fourth thing. But. We go from that down took way too long too. It was like a good like 10 whole minutes. I was like, what is happening? Which is hysterical with the fact that they had to replay a video. So it's like, why not cut that from there? Either either way. Also, the duct tape that didn't work. Kenny broke the duct tape three times because he's too strong and they couldn't duct tape him to the ropes. So they like you see Hobbs trying to get Takesh to come up and hold his wrist. And Takesh is like, I have no what's going on. I'm just doing what I'm doing. It made no sense. It was all the schmas. It shouldn't have happened. I want to move on, Mikey. I want to move on to the match that I enjoyed the most this evening. So I want to for that. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's where I want to move to it. That's where I want to move to it. That's why I want to go there because we did have a great promo, but I want to move on to the match I liked. The promo you're talking about, though, basically is like breaking <laughs> kayfabe, but not. Right. Max is being thirsty. Yeah, well, a little bit. Well, both. Well, both. So we have Maxwell, and then we have Max Caster. <laughs> so exactly. we got to differentiate here. MJF getting a massage on the neck that's hurting him because he got in a little bit of a beat down, all that type of stuff. He's talking to Renee about the fact that he's like, he's very worried about this. He's got to take on Jay White, all these things. And <laughs> who creeps in behind him? But they claimed. And Daddy they just asked, randomly and, walk in. I love it. They do. And Max moves the masseuse out of the way and starts to massage MJF. And MJF catches on and they have a tete a tete at this. And Max calls out the fact that he like, you know, MJF calls out the fact that Max has been doing, saying stuff on Twitter to him and like being kind of a creeper and stalking him. And Max is like, no, no, it's, it's OK. It's OK. Are they setting them up as like now MJF realizes he can have other friends he's going to be friends with? He's going to start doing the scissor thing with the acclaimed. I'm I'm actually kind of here for it. <laughs> Kangaroo scissor. <gasps> oh, my gosh. And then. Just because it would be funny, Anthony Bowens tries to does like he does the normal during the acclaimed entrance, like yell at the city and the acclaimed has arrived. But 
MJF like pushes him out of the way and does it instead. <laughs> that this be- could work really well. It, I, I loved this promo for that reason. And Renee is just like, <laughs> Renee's just selling like, I don't know what's going on here. This is insanity. I feel for you. I love that Renee always gets put in these situations where let's see how far we can try to break her character <laughs> in terms of making her laugh. Cold. She is stone <laughs> yes, cold. So she good. So well. She is that girl. <laughs> she is that girl. Speaking we move on girl. to my, my match of the night with yes. two, two of them. That don't could care. Me too. Well. Oh my God. <laughs> we had timeless Tony storm with her makeup askew and her hair a mess. Versus Sky Blue, who, loving the subtleties of how they're playing this through, her makeup is now getting larger and larger and darker after being misted by Julia Hart, which also happened to Willow on Dynamite last week. And a couple of things here, they're really playing up the corruption that Julia Hart is doing to the women's division. It's very interesting. <sighs> I love it. I really do. Tony Storm I, I, looking like she came from like an old Hollywood like casting call <laughs> just like everything's a mess she she broke up with her third husband exactly she she's on her you know she's been on uppers and downers and diet pills being on set because obviously she had to lose 10 pounds to be part of a, a weird wizard of oz remake her starlet like her movie career has gone down the toilet and she's upset because now she has to resort to hand modeling to survive <laughs> I love her also when she introduces herself to Sky Blue and then headbutts her. Like it's just like oh my gosh. Just, everything she does is so planned and poignant and wonderful. Like how she reacts to getting a pin that doesn't work, you know, going through everything else. And we get the most meta fourth wall break oh right as we go to our first picture in picture, where she literally rolls it after hip attacking Sky Blue off the apron yep. into the barricade, rolls herself out and then just turns and says, and now. Stay tuned for some wonderful advertisements from some or from some uh, sponsors here. A message from some very and very important sponsors. And I love that Excalibur calls it like she caught she she threw a uh, picture in picture just for you. And they cut to picture in picture as she yells out. And Mikey, you heard this on the British. OK, feed. I want to talk this, about this because this it. shit made me laugh. So literally. So while picture in picture. Oh, my goodness. So without, you know, while picture in picture was happening. If you watch the TBS feed, you didn't get to see this, but I got to see the the version that was meant to be shown. But of course, now I understand why I went to picture in picture because we can't say those kinds of things on TV. But literally, Tony Storm goes up to grab Sky Blue and she's like, you know what? It's time for a titty slap. I was like, oh, my gosh. And she put Sky Blue onto the barricade. Ooh. And like literally Ooh. full onto the chest. Sky Blue falls to the ground. Now, th- if that wasn't enough, that kind of caught me off guard. I was like, well, it kind of makes sense for her character. So that one didn't catch me off guard. What she said next caught me off guard because the sky blue is reeling from getting slapped in the chesticle region. Then Tony Storm walks up to us and is like, let me see those titties, eh? I was like, oh my gosh, Tony Storm. And literally, I hear Excalibur is just like, this is why we're in picture in picture, folks. So I was like, yes. Walking HR violation, Tony yes. Storm. <laughs> Uh, I saw it like you could see it in the small little box. I didn't know what was going on. I wish I had heard that stuff, but she's, she's living up to the whole like tits up, uh, tits out, chin up and watch out. Wear the shoe. So, uh, she brings it. We bring, bring back from picture in picture. There's a lot more back and forth. Sky blue starting to get a little bit of a hope spot, but honestly, Tony storm rocks her for the rest of the match. Hits a nasty. Look. I love the, what she's calling the close up now, even though it's the hip attack where she does her full pose in the corner. A nasty hip attack. And the camera zooms in, too. I was like, what oh. the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Hip attack into the Storm Zero and beats Sky Blue and then celebrates and tries to, like, thank her but not thank her. Like, wants her to get out of her shot. Uh, praises the referee. Like, tries to th- thank you for being here. And then is posing. And, oh, my God. This was just match of the night overall. The storytelling, character work. Sky Blue held her own and did a really well thing on that. And was also, if you didn't know, was working a little bit more heel for the stuff she was doing. And I love that. So well produced overall. So glad. Sad it's the only women's match on the damn card. We're gonna keep this is gonna be keep this is gonna keep being a thing until we're blue in the face. <laughs> I don't wanna die from this. I don't wanna die at all. No, we can't. Don't say that, please. Well, I don't want to anyways, because now we had Stokely Hathaway from ROH on our TVs, and it made my night. Oh, my gosh. Okay, talk about this, because I was, like, hooping and hollering this whole entire time. 
Renee talking about uh, how we're having a four-way match for the number one contender's uh, spot for the ROH championship on Rampage. Why is it on Rampage and not on ROH? This is what I would like to know because I think the same amount of people watch ROH that watch Rampage. Hmm? Uh, but either way, we're having that there, and so Renee is bringing it up to and Stokely Hathaway, who is part of the uh, authority in ROH, is there to stop her right away. No, don't worry about this. And sell the match wholeheartedly, goes into what's going on about it. Eddie Kingston being the champion needs to have a real type of opponent because we need a champion that smells like Tom Ford and not Burger King and cigarettes. I had to pause my television because I was laughing my ass off. Stokely. Stokely Hathaway just off the cuff just says the most almost crossing the line shit and it is like the best the fact that um Stokely I love you so much <laughs> Stokely is amazing I it was well done let this man have more airtime anywhere you can we love him on ROH we don't want to share him but honestly we're gonna have to because he's ridiculous and so back to back this was the peak of the night for me as much as I enjoyed the next segment for what it was. And I also love going back to hear the uncensored version of it because they're the censors tonight. We're having a field day trying to get Tony storm into picture in picture this yeah, thing a couple yeah. times. The second, cause I got to see the uncensored version the second time through and listen, Christian cage is a menace out here in his turtleneck and I'm here oh for it. Oh my God. He's like, he's like the, an older version of Archer. If Archer went completely bad. Okay, so before we get to Christian Cage and all that, because of what happened. Tactical so, turtleneck. Tactical turtleneck. We're, we're, somebody need like, Christian, you need to, like, workshop that into it and just, like, yes, I love it. But, uh, so, the main event segment, if you'll call it that, you know, Adam Copeland comes out, he gives his AEW, what I, I wrote in my notes, literally, Adam Copeland presents the his AEW thesis statement. <laughs> Here's my resume. Here's why I should be exactly. here. It's a job interview, uh, which also love that he paid homage to Tony, Tony Schiavone and like the way he could. He can't can't bring up that he was Damon Stryker or that he was Sexton Hardcastle, but he could probably do a little bit of that. My thing is with this, I, I mean, before we even get into this, Mikey, I had one major gripe with this first part. Mm hmm. I get that you want that realistic look in the ring being close to him, but he paces when he talks and it, I was getting seasick with the camera work, the zooms in, the zooms out, the moves like I was like, stop like, moving around. I couldn't like I had to actually look away a couple times because I was actually getting like like I do when I get car sick. It was really terrible. Stay in one place. Follow him the best you can. Don't zoom in. Don't like the cameraman. You could tell was walking with him and not panning and zooming with the actual unit. It was it was bad. So that that that's my my big thing on this. I couldn't deal with it. We move on to him presenting his resume, why he's here, who he wants to face. A lot of names dropped that were interesting names. Uh overall. I don't know if one sounded like once he had to say because they were on the show that night, or he actually wants to face them, powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, but in general, you know, he called it I love that he called out Juice Robinson and he went after him on that one. That was so good. Listen, I want Adam Copeland and Juice, if nothing, because they are on the mic. They because Adam Copeland will get fucking crazy too. And like, if the rumors are true, an intergender tag match between Juice and Tony, and Adam and Beth. <laughs> please listen, like, please, yes. On <laughs> <laughs> the prospect of it, just. As Tony Storm would say, it just titillates the juices. <laughs> it does. But we have him go lay all this down, but it, then it comes to the real reason he's there. He brings up, he tells a story about how he was at talking over his career with his family and, you know, how retirement was on, on the table at this point because nothing else to do in, in the other company. And his daughter, Lyric, wise, wisest one that he knows, says, no, you should go to AEW and have fun with Uncle Jay. And then he has to explain who Uncle Jay is because there may be some younger folks that don't realize how the kayfabe breaks and who this really is and who they are. They have an idea. Forget the young crowd. You also have to speak to the older crowd who is never forgiving him for some odd reason now. Exactly. But this was, you know, he then has to call out Christian. You may know him as Christian. Call him out as Jay and making it real. And I love the kind of realism of it. 
and that kind of stuff and explaining his actions and going through uh, Christian Cage coming out like he smelled a fart too. Like his uh, nose up in the his air. His nose is so high up in the air. He can't see past it to, to anybody else, including his best friend in front of him. And Adam went into everything. He talked about the, them know each other for so long, how, you know, they, they were, they got into this together. They were a team that they, they held each other up and he loves him, even though he's done some bad things. And then they go into how it was, why he did what he did at wrestle dream, because one of the heroes of Christian cage sting was on the ground. He was beating up the man that he idolized and how could he do that? And, you know, I still love you. And then, it was contrived enough. You knew it was going to be brought up and it was for that pop. I don't think this was the time to bring that up to him because you could tell Cage wasn't in any mood to talk. Mm-mm. And they kind of play, they played it as well as they could. Like Christian Cage seemed to think about it for a second. I was like, oh, yeah, that'd be amazing. But th- that last statement of we we should end our careers together as a team. This should have been like weeks down the road after yes. many fights and like we've done what we can. We've had our battle. Let's do this. And that brings them together. And hopefully they can. But uh, he he basically asks him to reform E and C as A and C, I guess. Sounds like a knockoff root beer brand. <laughs> Copeland and Cage. Um, sure. Rated R and uh, Daddy uh, Dead Dad Kink. I, I don't know. Like it's just uh, Father of the the Fathers of the Year. Um, oh my god. Either way, the, he 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 opens his arms and asks him to embrace him and do this and cage for his uh, you know it was great he had that moment and he looked at it and he played it up and he hugged him and it was a nice moment and then we knew what to expect because literally we slept before they cut to adam like still hugging him they uh, they caught christian ready to pick up the mic of like oh he's gonna say some out-of-pocket shit isn't he and then sure enough christian cage is like now they censored it, but I'm gonna give you the uncensored version. They censored the whole thing, though. He's he literally got the gut out, and then the whole thing was censored because they knew it was coming. But for those of you that watched the uncensored version, we got to hear. Uh, let me tell you, there is, there are very few strings of words when put together that just causes a like guttural, like, oh my god, I think my soul just died a little bit. And the way, and when you put it with Christian Cage's delivery. Like I was like, I don't even I'm not even in the ring. And I was like, oh, my God, if I it, if I wouldn't take that disrespect, if it was just me. But literally Christian Cage with the perfect delivery, Mike in hand is like, go fuck yourself. And, and it then, wasn't even like we an attacking when it was like, you are nothing to me. How how dare you? That, how dare I was you? like, I cringed. I was like, oh, my God, that's so vicious. It was, it was. And also I, to rewind a little bit back also, I love that in Edge's promo, in Adam's promo, he did bring up the fact as he mentioned that like, you know, Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne are going to take everything from Christian's brain and then throw him to the curb. Slight dig at a uh, judgment day in the booking of judgment day there. Hmm? I mean, technically it was edges before they decided, yeah, we don't need edge in this. I'm like, how the fuck do you not? Whatever. Exactly. But so the, but he says, go F yourself. He then exits the ring you think it's going to be over and then no he brings it back around and goes right back into kayfabe except to the fact that no you don't know what's coming for you you are huh, very much in danger because you are facing this next week or on t- yeah basically uh, basically on tuesday and luchasaurus and nick wayne come out and nick wayne looking completely out of place <laughs> next to luchasaurus i'm like sir like, what is this white, hot like, topic NWO sweater we're wearing hoodie. It looked like Scott Hall's NWO Outsiders tights in white on a fuzzy sweater. Christian Cage, you need to make sure that Nick Wayne doesn't go shop at H&M. <laughs> like, Not even Forever 21. We need something better. Yes. Like, we, he, needs, he needs to stop shopping at those places. And Mikey, that was the end of the show. Was Luchasaurus roaring at the camera and, and Adam Copeland looking a little dejected. Kind of a letdown. I thought it was. I thought it was a letdown. I don't disagree with you. I agree with you. I was just like, oh, okay. I wasn't necessarily disappointed, but I think the worst thing than disappointed is I was just indifferent. I'm like, okay. So here's the other part I want to ask you. Adam's fighting Luchasaurus on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I feel like they need to give him the win, but do they have one of the other guys that he mentioned in this thing interrupt and disqualify? 
basically take him out because he's not going for the TB, uh, TNT championship. And Christian, he's made a match with Luchasaurus to get to Christian and yet I'll call out all these other people that could be feuds for him, including MJF, which would be very interesting. Do we start that? Do we start the program? Because Luchasaurus isn't going to be his next next feud. It's not. It's. I'm not saying it's beneath him because Luchasaurus is an amazing wrestler and it would be a really cool thing to do, but I don't think it's the direction you would go with bringing Adam Copeland in to do this type of stuff. So I'll give you my opinion. I would love that. <laughs> do you, though? <laughs> Cause, all right. So as soon as the like, we didn't even get, we didn't, they didn't even wait until we got to Dynamite to announce that Mr. Copeland would be facing Luchasaurus at Title Tuesday. We literally got that like days ago. It was, I think, right after, like during the scrum or like right afterwards. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, Tony Khan has made it official that on Title Tuesday, Adam Title Copeland, Tuesday, Title. Adam Copeland will be facing Luchasaurus. I'm like, damn, you didn't waste no time. Now, obviously, I don't know who it would be, but yes, somebody is going to come out and cause a schmoz to happen. And then we build it up because I think whoever said person is, I believe that's Adam Copeland's full gear opponent. Yeah, it, it's got to be. And it uh, it's got to be a be. bigger one. It's got to be a bigger one. Uh, especially for full gear because it's one of the big one of the big four for AEW. So I don't know who it could be, but I think it need there needs to be an involvement during the Luchasaurus match, if not afterwards. Well, because I'm trying to figure out, and I'm thinking because Copeland, well, Copeland's going to be on Collision on Saturday too, but I'm assuming he's going to mostly be on Dynamite most of the time. I mean, I think they're going to get him on on a Collision more than Dynamite because he's they brought him in to fill that CM Punk role. I would be okay if he's on Collision. So then I'm thinking, okay. If that's the case, who on collision would he base who would be that way? Unfortunately, Miro. huh? Miro. Exactly. That was that's that was one of my choices. And honestly, I like that choice better than the other one that I had, because I feel like this the other individual I had. I don't want him losing to Copeland because, again, moment. We don't want to stop momentum because the other one I could see those like, yeah, let's throw Ricky Starks at him. I'm like, no. No, Starks is going for the the tag titles right now, anyways, which he's going to lose. But oh my god, we're gonna get we're gonna get. I now that I know this, we're gonna get FT rated R as a trios thing. That's been the rumor too, and I was like, I'm not mad at it, but like, it's what's gonna happen. I mean, that that's brought up. Like he knows them, and he he works well with them. So I mean, if anything else, I feel like they're gonna be the ones that retire ENC if it's not the Hardys. So. But who who knows at this point? It, it could it could be Aussie Open. Either way, this was the way to end it. We've got a bunch of matches set up. We're a little bit worried about it, Mikey. You said at the beginning, it was a serviceable Dynamite. It was a serviceable, serviceable especially for the four year anniversary of Dynamite. What's your rating? Two point eight empanadas out of five. Two point eight. Holy cow! Like like how? Describe for me a point eight empanada. I want to know what this looks like. Well, majority of it got taken out and this is just personal reasons um hated that we as much as i love tony versus guy and that was technically your main event wrestling wise it's still only one women's match tony so listen it was mm, we can't we can't be having sausage fests every week like i mean we do dynamite is a sausage fest and literally so is wrestle dream <laughs> Uh, we dream about Russell Cox. I mean, what? Sorry, I didn't say that out loud. Anyways, that's that's our after hours podcast that we do with the Russell Talk boys. <laughs> we do, we do. But uh, I give it a two point yeah, eight. The women's match. I didn't care for Jericho and Omega versus Takeshita and Fletcher. <laughs> I was very upset that Fletcher took the pin here. Um, again, what are the trios championships are lost in transition? I'm like, how the fuck do you manage to mess up the acclaimed who is like one of your most over tag teams along with daddy ass that is like one of the most over factions outside of house of black trios wise how the fuck do you manage to make this title reign like not that great i do not know and i'm still pissy that this is how he re-debuted wardlow i was like i was like no i like his direction as a character i just hated the wet fart like 
No builds up, no tease. It's just here you go, fans. Wardlow. I'm like, this is some bullshit. And wasting Griff Garrison, who is actually building momentum. That part too made me upset. And plus, also, the audio team needs to be fired. Like, what? Why do we still have these problems? Like, this is four years, and we still have audio problems. And this wasn't like like where you could save it, where it was a live audio issue, like the mic didn't work or something wasn't coming through. This was, was pre tape. <laughs> you tested this before you went on air, like. I get you. My, my, and, I I'm the, right and then the, the biggest problem is, is this is fourth year anniversary. I know you have title Tuesday next week, but God, you couldn't have done. You couldn't have done more crazier matches on here. I was like, whatever. Fine. I guess it's OK. So that's the, why I give it a two point eight empanadas out of five. This was serviceable, but I've seen better. And that's saying a lot. I think they're gun shy. They don't want to get anybody else except Ray Phoenix injured. Like basically is what it is. Um. I agree with you. I, I wouldn't go as high as 2.8. I was at about two and a half, two point seven five 2.75 empanadas. It was a medium dynamite. It, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. There were ups and downs. Could have been better. Could have been worse. We've seen worse. Uh, it, get knocked, it gets knocked down to a one and a half because one women's match. And yes, it was Tony Storm's awesome promo, but it was not really a full promo. It was literally a pre-taped addition to another. We go into this again. You had on this dynamite an ability to put another match because you had the Co- Adam Copeland long thing. You could have put another match in between of another women's match and built up another story. You have enough women doing it. You're talking about the stuff that's on collision and rampage where the fact of like, uh, Sheeta and, uh, you know, Statlander are together at this point, like, you know, doing a match. Why, why can't you do anything else like that? You don't need to have the championship. You Tony storm could, had her own match. It wasn't championship. It was championship with Jason. You could have had the cha- You could have Soraya on here doing something. I, I don't get it. I, I just That's don't another it. thing, too. We have this title match n- next week at Title Tuesday, and they have done dick squat to build up to Sheeta and Saray. I'm like, once again, your your women's champions are being screwed, are pl- basically being like pulled all over the place. Stop it. And hot, and hot potatoed at the same time. It's re freaking ridiculous. This was the issues they had when they started the division, and then they got better, and I don't know what the hell changed. It's ridiculous, and I'm I'm really getting sick of it. But those were our ratings for the evening. Mikey, any last parting words on this dynamite or the kind of like wet fart that it ended up being? My last thoughts is it was a thing that happened. And also, uh, let me see those titties, Tony Storm. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, that's my light of the night. Let me see those titties. I was like, did she really say that? Yes, she did. I've got to go back and find that feed so I can hear that. I, that's hysterical. But I sent like, you a TikTok that has the uncensored version of that section. Please go watch it. I will. Iconics wrestling fans, thank you for sitting through the, through this with us. Like we sat through Dynamite. Thank you for doing this every week with us. We truly appreciate you being here with all of our Biconic reviews and our Biconics podcast. We can't do this without you. We literally can't because who else do we play to? Who else is that? unknown party that we really have to have with us so remember when you watch these things with us follow us on the socials subscribe to the channel get those uh, alerts and those uh, um bell the, the bell notifications up so you know when we drop new stuff and when we reload new stuff because obviously we're still learning um drop some comments down there let us know how we're going tell us your favorite tony store in line what you like from picture in picture rant on something else we will respond we love you very much that way but overall If anything else is said, remember this. You're Biconic. We're Biconic as well. And we love sharing this art form with you. And we'll see you in the next video.